Thank you for your interest in our Tachet Minicon. This video will go through some parts identification of the system, the control box, as well as how to set up and load the labels and set up for different products within the uh, machine. So we have our touchscreen control box here, and we'll show you the electrical connections in the back, which are quick fit connections in a second. This is where your label roll goes, and it will feed through the mechanism here. We have a label diagram here showing the actual feeding path of the labels. One of the nice things about our machine is all of our rails for our product rails to guide them into the machine are laser etched for easy adjustments on both sides and your adjustments for your height and your position laterally across the conveyor all has numeric indicators. So adjusting from one product to the other is very simple. Within the file system on the control box, we also have five memory presets which can be programmed for each product to handle all any changes that may need to be made due to label or product size. And I'll show you this a little bit more in detail. To explain a little bit more, we have our conveyor here. These are the product rails that are adjustable based upon your particular product. Back here, we have our start sensor. And this particular sensor is a reflective sensor, and the reflector for it is right here. Now, the guide rails, the product rails, are fully adjustable, both in height and in closure, depending on the width of the box. So that's easily done just by using a Allen wrench, which we do provide as part of our kit, which does come with the machine. The Minicon can be integrated into an inline system, or if using it as a standalone, we have lead-in plates that can be added on this side, and we also have an exit plate that can be added to this side, and other feeding peripherals are available on a custom application basis. The stop sensor here is what indicates when one label is fed and what it does is it reads the gap in the labels. Now if you're using a transparent or a clear label that will work on this machine perfectly fine we just need to uh, put a different sensor on there which is an option as a clear label sensor. The Minicon is a wipe on label applicator, so you do have a brush here which you want to lightly touch the top of the product as it goes through. What we're going to do now is turn the machine around and show you the back of the unit, show you how to make your electrical connections prior to use, and then we'll come back and actually load the machine and get it set up for a particular product. So this is the rear of the Minicon. And during shipping, the electrical connections here are not plugged in, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. One other thing I do want to point out is this is a dual voltage machine. There is a dip switch here. So if you're using it 110 volt, it's set that way for the U.S. market. For international, it can just put the uh, dip switch to the 220 setting. It will work on 220 volt. So... And back here you have your adjustment for your fine tuning of the height of the uh, label head above the product. And again, we have another indicator here showing that. We have our stepper motor for the, excuse me, for the label head. And then on this side, we do have a transformer here for the speed of the conveyor. Please note that the speed is relative to some of the other settings that we will be doing with a little bit later. You can adjust the speed, but it may affect your other settings as well as the accuracy of the label depending on your particular application and needs. So when you get the machine, as I mentioned, these cords are not uh, put in for safety in transit. So the cords are either marked directly or will only fit into one place within. 
So this one is marked stop sensor. We're just going to put this into the stop sensor. Tighten the ring. The black one is marked start sensor. Then we have one more similar looking one that has no mark and that's going to go to your C motor or our conveyor motor. The other two, you have a three pin and a five pin connector. They can only fit in the one location and there is a tab to make sure it goes into the proper place. And all we want to do is tighten these up. And then your main power plugs in right here, and this is a standard IEC outlet, so if you are using a different plug than what is provided in for the US market, you can just add whatever cord you need and it should plug in here as this is an internationally recognized um, outlet used throughout the world. What we're going to do now is turn the machine back around and explain a little bit about the control box. So now let's take a look at the touchscreen controller that comes with the machine. So just to explain a little bit about the home screen, we have our count. Now the count is the number of cycles put through as well as this machine does come with a target counter where you can set a specific number, let's say 500, after 500 pieces are labeled, the machine will stop labeling. The C here clears your count. If you have target set, this one is set for one. I'll show you how to turn that on off in a second. As I mentioned, there are five memory presets and these are under the button mark file. Each memory preset is the same and contains three adjustments. Label speed. The label speed is the speed of the label head and this is relative to the speed of the conveyor. If those two do not match, the label will either wrinkle upon application if the label head speed is too high, or if it's too slow, it's, the label will drag against the product and there'll be no accuracy. Start delay. Start delay is the delay from when the product passes through the beam of the start sensor to where we actually apply it to the product. And this may take a little bit of trial and error to get it set, but once it's set, as long as nothing else changes, this is a very consistent number. Stop delay is a fine tuning of where the label feeds out to. So when the label is threaded and comes out of this separator plate, rather than physically moving the sensor, which we can do in order to locate the gap, we can use the stop delay. This is very helpful when using different size labels because we don't move this stop sensor, we use the stop delay to adjust for the different label lengths. Anytime we make a change to this, we hit save and OK, and that is now changed. If I want to change to a different file, I just it would hit 4, OK. Now the machine's going to run off of file number 4. To switch back to number 1, OK, now we're working off of number 1. Option. Option is very simple. It's just whether or not we want to keep something on and used during operation or not. As you can see, labeler is now written on is now showing on and that means that the label head is set to work. If we're adjusting for the product guides, let's say, to make sure that the product runs through smoothly, we may want to turn that off so we're not wasting labels and the label won't feed out and then once that's set up, we turn it back on. To turn it off, we just press it and it goes on off. Target counter. The target counter, as I mentioned earlier, will allow you to preset a number in the target count. And then once, it, once the machine reaches that number, it'll stop labeling product. So if we turn that on, we now go back into option. 
and we go target and I put my target at 500 enter. That means we're looking at doing 500 pieces. And you'll notice on the right here that target is highlighted before it wasn't. That's showing that it's now active as an option on the machine. If we want to turn it off, that highlight will go. Now, one thing very important when using the target counter is you want to make sure you clear the count. Otherwise, it will take in the, into account the number that have already been counted until that hits 500. So I'm going to shut that off. And now you'll notice that that's no longer highlighted. Other options under this screen are it allows us to show a start error or a stop error during operation of the machine. So if there's a malfunction in reading the product with the start sensor, it'll show an error. Or in reading the label with the stop sensor, it'll show an error. Input, output. This is showing now that what the sensors are seeing and what is operating. So the stop sensor now does not have a label in it, so it's showing that there's no label. If we insert a label in between and get to the gap, you'll see that that goes on and off. So if we need to test the sensor to make sure that it's working properly or adjusted properly for your label, this is a great way to do it. Same thing with the start sensor. As I put my hand across the conveyor here, breaking the beam of the reflective sensor, then that will show me that that sensor is reading the product properly. The last one is the stepper motor. This is just showing that when the motor is actually cycling, feeding the label, this will light up such like the stop sensor is now. And then we'll stop once that label is fed out completely. The last button here is the run button, and this is now the machine is ready to run and work and apply labels. If we don't want this, we just hit off and it goes back to the standby state. Our conveyor is controlled here, and we can start and stop the conveyor just by pressing this button here. Now let's go into feeding a label. Now we're going to show you how to load the labels onto the Minicon. As we showed earlier, there is a diagram here. And one of the first steps you want to make sure is that the control box or the whole machine is either off, but you can do it while it's on. But even if you want, you make sure that it's not, it's run is showing here. So as you load the labels, they're not going to start feeding on you. So the first thing we do is we want to put the label roll onto the shaft here that supports it. In order to do that, we have a spring clamp that we just press the two ends together, and that will loosen it and allows it to come off and on easily. We remove the one side of the roll guide plate. Now, this side is permanently mounted using a set screw. It can, of course, be moved left and right, or for left and right adjustments, we normally suggest utilizing this um, ball screw. This will make it much easier rather than trying to readjust up here. So we put the label roll on, and there is a three inch core projection on both sides of the label roll so that the core of the labels will sit securely on the shaft. And we just put that on, slide the second one on, and then we reattach the spring. Now, we don't want to add tension here. We just want to keep this plate so it doesn't move laterally along the shaft. Now, one secret is when you come over this brake arm, your label has to touch this brake arm. If it doesn't touch the brake arm, then you know that the label is not loaded and coming off the roll properly. Also, we have this roller here. This roller applies a little bit of ad additional tension to the label roll. If you have an easy peeling label, you don't need it. If your label is a little harder peeling, has a little more of aggressive um, adhesive, this may help. 
We normally suggest you load it without this first, and if you find that the label's not feel, uh, peeling properly or consistently, then reload it going around this label like it does show in the chart here. Along the shafts, you'll notice these black spring collars. What these spring collars do is they keep the label straight as it's feeding through the system. This is important because if the label is skewed as it feeds, it's going to apply um, skewed onto the product. So once you get the label loaded and you, make, uh, you want to try to make sure that the label path is straight, then what you do is you bring these collars in, not pressing against the liner, but as close as you can without pressing it, and that will keep the label straight through the feed path. So we're going to pull out some extra label liner. Our next step is we're going to go through this shaft and here you have a urethane wiper. This urethane wiper is a tension point here along the label feed path and it just supplies a little bit of tension and you can just loosen that up with the thumb screw and you put the edge of the label through that and now once we have that what we're going to do is go into our stop sensor, which we discussed earlier. Now the stop sensor has a slot. The label must feed into that slot. Also, we have an arrow on the end of the sensor. This is the indication point within the sensor where it's actually detecting the label in the gap. So we want to make sure that the label feeds into this, keeping it within the collars. And I'm going to add a little bit of tension back on up here. We don't want to add a lot of tension, we just want to add a little bit so that we don't get extra slack built up along the top. If you find that the indicator point is not properly lining up with the label, you can move the sensor in and out just using this thumb screw. We normally suggest that you mark that you align that arrow with the middle of the label. It gives you a little bit of flexibility. We take the end of the label now and we go under this roller, under the urethane, and around our separator plate here. Now I've lifted the brush that's used to wipe down the label onto the product so you can easily see this. One thing you want to make sure is that your label does not overhang either of these corners of the separator plate. That's going to be a point where the label liner will break during feeding. That's also where the shaft collars become more important, the spring-loaded collars, to control that label. This urethane here is used, again, as a little bit of a tension point. You want to keep some tension on the label to make sure you maintain the accuracy of your feed. I'm going to pull the label manually. And I am finding a little bit of tension, so I'm just going to loosen this up slightly as I'm feeding it. That's a little bit better. Now we're going to come below this roller here and we're going to go into the feed station here. So let's move the, to this side. Now the feed station has an open and close. So when we're feeding the label we want to open the gap between these two rollers and we're going to go over the purple roller and then under and around the metal knurled roller. Then we're going to go up into our feet, our rewinder for the backing paper. And all we do is put this clamp on. Once the labels are fed over the purple roller, around the knurled roller, and secured to the label rewinder, we have to make sure we close this gate. This brings these two rollers together and that's where your positive feed comes in, ensuring accuracy. We go here and we go from run and press the run button. Now we just wipe our finger across and the label feeds out properly. Now we're going to make uh, the physical adjustments to run this box and apply a label in the middle. So. There are two product rails, as I mentioned earlier, both have the laser-edged marking on them. 
so that they're easy to adjust. And once you have it adjusted, so if we know that this is gonna be file one in our computer touch screen, what we're gonna do is we make notation of the adjustments here and we can go right to it. But I'm doing this as an initial setup, so I have to figure that out. I've secured the back rail so that it's straight and works for my particular products because I have nothing that's wide enough for this. So because this is now secured, I'm gonna make all my adjustments from, with the front rail as well as using the fine tuning adjustments for height and positioning here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the box in the middle and you wanna make sure that your um, touch screen is off so that we're not feeding labels as we're doing this. Utilizing the wrench set that is included, I'm gonna take my five millimeter wrench and I'm gonna loosen these two uh, collars up just enough so I can bring the product in. So what I want to do is I want to bring this rail in. Let me loosen this one up a little bit more. Just enough so that we're just guiding this box and that there's no lateral movement. We don't want to actually press on the box. We do want it to move freely. Using the laser etched markings, I'm um, going to note where they are and that they're straight. And I'm going to tighten this up, not 100%, just enough so it doesn't skew while I'm running it. Again, making sure that the label head is off, I'm going to hit the conveyor on. And I'm going to make sure that the box travels freely down the conveyor. Now, we have a little bit of a pinch point here, which means that this rail is in slightly too much. So I'm just gonna pull that out a fraction. Leave that open and just make sure that now we travel smoothly through. Our next adjustment is gonna be the height of the label head. So I'm going to turn the conveyor off and I'm going to again put this right under the peel plate. Now you want the label head and this peel plate as close as possible to the product without it actually touching. So utilizing, utilizing the ball screw back here for the vertical adjustment, I'm going to raise or lower this until it's almost touching, but not. And you can see there's a tiny bit of space there. So again, now what I'm gonna do is pull this off, and I'm gonna hit run, excuse me, I'm gonna hit the conveyor, and just make sure that we pass underneath. Again, I have the wiper brush set up at an up angle, just so you can see what I'm doing. The last adjustment, and we'll turn the conveyor off one more time, is our horizontal adjustment. Again, utilizing the ball screw, we're going to visually move the head until this is centered on the box. Now what's nice, because we may be doing different products, once we have that set, if you take notation of these uh, digital indicators of your height and your horizontal adjustment, you can always go back to them immediately. Once we now set up for the actual run, we can always tweak these adjustments as needed. So now that the physical adjustments have been made, what we want to do is make sure that the label is feeding out in the proper position for application. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the system is off so I don't start feeding and wasting labels. So I'm going to hit the off to, so that the run appears. This way, when we break the reflective sensor, nothing's going to happen. So again, the, the brush is up here for demonstration purposes, so you can see. But I'm looking at this label. I see that we're not feeding it out far enough. 
So there are two ways to adjust this. We have what we call a gross adjustment, which is physically moving the sensor. And then we have a more fine adjustment, which we do through the control panel, through the stop delay function. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying that because we don't have enough label feeding out, I'm going to loosen the slide and lower the sensor a little bit. Now, once I'm on the gap, you'll notice on the sensor that a yellow light is lighting. That means that it's reading the gap between the labels. This is a great starting point, and I'm going to tighten this up. Now, if you're moving the sensor above and below a gap and it's not reading the yellow, you want to hit the plus button once or twice, try it again, once or twice, try it again, until the yellow light comes on, but only comes on when the sensor is at the gap. If you find that the yellow light's coming on when the sensor is actually over a label, it's too sensitive. Now you want to hit the minus button. That's how you adjust for that sensor. So I'm going to go back to the run now and see if we're in the proper position. And I'm going to feed out a label by hand. That looks really good, except we want that label out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is go into file one, which is the file I'm going to use for this current project. I'm going to go here and I look at the stop delay. Now the stop delay is set for 25. I want this label to feed out slightly more. So what I'm going to do is increase this by a few points. So I'm going to go to 30. Enter, save, OK. And I'm going to put my finger across the sensor. And that looks good because it's right at the edge of the plate. So once the label is in the proper feeding position, the next thing we want to do is we want to run a box through and we want to set up where the label is going to end up physically on the box. As I mentioned earlier, the start sensor, which is the reflective sensor, is going to read the leading edge of the product as it goes down the conveyor. What we're going to do is we're going to use the start delay feature in order to locate the correct position on the box. So right now, we're at 250. So what we're going to do is go back, because I'm not making any changes, I'm going to use the back arrow. I'm going to turn the conveyor on, I'm going to make sure that we're in the run position, and I'm going to run the box through. Now that's not bad, but I want to make it a little bit further back. So let's go to about 300. And this will take a little bit of trial and error, but again, because it's in the preset memory, once you do this, you know that this item is for file one, you never have to do it again. And now we'll see that the label is further back. Just to give you an idea of the capability here, I know 300 is my good mark. Let's go to 150. 150, enter, save, okay. So now 150 would be if I wanted it more here. And I'm going to go to 500, again, just to, for demonstration purposes. And that's going to go now towards the back of the box. If we want to move it slightly higher, what I'm going to do is move the ball screw a little bit. And that's our lateral adjustment here. And just to get it centered a little bit better. And you can see right here. So we know 300 is our proper number. And let's run a few boxes through. I'm going to run the back side of this box. And let's run them through again, just so you can see the consistency. And you can see, you can't even tell where the second label went as it went directly over. Now the last adjustment within the file is label speed. 
as I mentioned at the beginning, label speed is relative to conveyor speed. If we were using, let's say, a larger label, and that label would get a buckle as it, as it was applied, then we would know that the label speed is too high relative to the conveyor speed. If we're getting an inconsistency in the label placement, then we know that the label head speed is here is too slow. So for demonstration purposes, I know that we're at 1500 right now. If we adjust the label speed, it's going to affect the start delay. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go to 1800. And you can just see and it came back a little bit so the label head speed and the start delay and the conveyor speed are all simultaneous if you change one you may have to change the others that is the basic setup of our Tachet Minicon. And again, because all of these machines use the same label head, the Minicon S, the Minicon R, the Minicon on the stand, and the Minicon top and bottom will all have a similar setup for the machine. Thank you for your interest and hopeful purchase of our Tachet Minicon.